Hi, and welcome to the Mayor's Report, my monthly program on Northampton Community Television, in which we try to talk with residents about the issues and projects that we're working on here in the city of Northampton. Today I'm uh, reporting from, for, on location uh, at the Department of Public Works on Locust Street. The temperature outside right now in Northampton is currently 9 degrees. Uh, and I thought, what better weather than to talk with residents about one of the most important fun functions that we provide in the city and that the DPW provides, and that's snow fighting. Uh, today I'm joined by the director of the Northampton Department of Public Works, Ned Huntley, uh, and uh, welcome Ned to the Mayor's Report. Well, thank you for having the Public Works involved today. Yes, and uh, I thought I'd start with just giving people a quick overview of all the different uh, functions uh, that the Public Works Department handles in the city, and then we'd focus in on uh, the snow fighting. Sure. Uh, we're responsible for clean water delivery to residents and business in Northampton. We also provide wastewater services, collection and treatment, uh, eventual discharge to the Connecticut River, receiving water body. Uh, we have two transfer stations in the city. We have parks, cemetery, streets, uh, water division, uh, wastewater division, um, solid waste division. Uh, I think that pretty much covers all the engineering division and administration. And if you're a public works department in New England, uh, a big part of your portfolio, especially this time of the year, is dealing with snow and, and, uh, and dealing with snow fighting. That's correct. It's probably one, one of the most watched things about DPW is wintertime. Exactly. So we're standing here in a barn with a lot of equipment. Uh, we've obviously made a huge investment as a city in a lot of uh, snow fighting equipment. So give folks a sense of kind of the fleet that we, we work with uh, in terms of snow fighting. We have a fleet of, uh, well, we do, besides city streets, about 160 miles of roadway, we also take care of the city school systems, their parking lots, so we use a combination of uh, bucket loaders with snow plows on the front of those. We'll use a grader for downtown. We have 10-wheel dump trucks with sander bodies and plows. We have six-wheel dump trucks. And we have a fleet of regular pickup trucks that we plow the city with. And in terms of the budget, uh, as, a, as, a, as part of your city budget, uh, your budget as part of the city budget each year, snow fighting and what we call the snow and ice budget uh, is, a, is a component of that. So where are we in terms of what the size of that snow and ice budget is? Uh, this year's snow and ice budget is $426,000. Uh, 126000 of it is dedicated to overtime, mm -hmm. and the rest of it is for purchase of materials to fight snow and ice, like salt, sand, and so on. And a lot of that stuff happens even before the snow fighting season begins. We, we go out to bid and purchase things like salt and sand and fill our, fill our cupboards, if you will, with yeah. all that equipment. We start getting it actually prepared in July after the budget passes. We're fixing equipment that was broken from April, the last snowstorm, because our snow and ice budget ends in April. Mm -hmm. And uh, with it, in August usually, we're actually doing the procurement of salt, sand, materials, and anything else we need to fight for the winter. So everything's really in place by the end of October. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and another major important piece of this is also maintaining all these vehicles. So you have a maintenance staff here that is also constantly maintaining vehicles, trying to fix vehicles. And we've also made some purchases through the capital improvement program of new uh, pieces of snow fighting equipment. Yes, this year actually we um, received two new pieces of equipment, a new 10-wheel dump truck with a uh, twin plow on it mm -hmm. and a new uh, uh, bombardier to do the sidewalks in the city. Uh, the 10 wheel truck is about $280,000, very expensive piece of equipment, but it has a lifespan of 20 25 years. And the bombardier uh, to do the sidewalks was about $140,000, and uh, that will probably last 10 to 12 years mm -hmm. in the city. Now, one of the things we've been trying to do in recent years is, is uh, look at sort of historical trends in the snow and ice budget. We've tried to put more money into the snow and ice budget so that we wouldn't face shortfalls. But again, we're, we're subject to Mother Nature. Uh, she controls the ultimate budget for the city. So snow and ice is actually one of the areas where cities are actually allowed to deficit spend um, because we don't actually know in any given year, it could be a rough winter, it could be a light winter, how much we're going to spend. So uh, I know that, uh, where, where are we right now? It's January. I know we've had several storms. We One just missed us today. Right. How are we doing on our snow and ice budget right now? We're about halfway through our snow and ice budget, but what hasn't hit the, the invoice books yet is a salt procurement that we just did, mm -hmm. probably about $50,000, $60,000 worth of that coming in. So with that, we're below 50% of our budget. I anticipate going to City Council in early February for deficit spending request. Okay. All right. Well, uh, 
this is, uh, you know, this is an important thing, and obviously it's one of the things people who live in New England, who live in Northampton, uh, how their roads are plowed. It's a public safety issue. It is. Because one of the things that we're concerned about is making sure not only the roads are safe for uh, residents to get around, but also for public safety vehicles. Uh, so one of the pieces that we often deal with is the parking situation in Northampton. Mm -hmm. So we issue parking bans based on uh, whether or not there's a snow emergency going on. Uh, talk a little bit about that process. So the process starts as the highway superintendent actually calls the emergency. We go out and turn on all the blue lights to the traffic signals in town so mm -hmm. the public, general public's aware. Mm -hmm. And then the flood of emails go out or text messages go out that there is a snow emergency ongoing. And with that, there's no parking during the midnight hours till I believe six in the morning in the city once we declare that emergency. And then it's, I think it's 2 a.m. for Main Street downtown. That's but, correct. But essentially the goal of that is so that we can get vehicles off the streets so that DPW crews can get in there and clean the streets off. Right, our goal is to plow once during an event and not have to go back multiple nights to do cleanup operations. That's mm -hmm. our goal. Sometimes it doesn't happen with a long dur duration storm though. Excellent. Okay. Um, in terms of when you know when folks look at all this equipment in here, uh, what are other? I, I know that you're constantly reassessing your capital program. I mean, some of the equipment in this room uh, is vintage 1980, uh, circa 1980 equipment with lots of miles on it. So we're constantly trying to replace. Uh, older pieces with newer pieces. Um, talk about some of the potential future needs that you'll be bringing forward in the capital improvement program. One of the things that we've been focus focusing on in the past few years is uh, upgrading our pickup trucks from regular one-ton pickup trucks to 550s. They can handle the snow that much better and they don't break down as frequently because they're a heavy-duty truck. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a huge cost increase because of those are almost doubling the cost of buying a vehicle but uh, when you get the longevity out of it rather than a few short years because um, once you get over you know, 12, a foot or so, 15 inches of snow, these one-ton trucks can't move the snow around, need bigger equipment. Mm -hmm. Our equipment needs range from you know, uh, trucks that are in the $50,000 range to $300,000 for new equipment. Mm -hmm. And um, some of our equipment we use are in excess of uh, 32, 35 years old at this point. Exactly, exactly. Okay, well I really appreciate your, uh, your letting us come into the DPW today and no uh, spending some time talking with us. Um, we're now gonna, I'm now gonna switch over and, and go see your street superintendent, uh, Rich Parcelletti, who directly oversees the snow fighting operations, and just talk with him about what he does uh, when, a, when a storm is uh, bearing down on Northampton and how we approach the snow fighting process. Great, well thank you for having me on the show. Okay, thank you. So we're now joined on the mayor's report by the city's uh, DPW uh, street superintendent, Rich Parcelletti. Rich, great to have you on the mayor's report. Thank you for having Thanks me, Thanks for David. being on. So uh, talk a little bit first about uh, the streets division. Um, here we are in front of one of your vehicle streets division. What, uh, in addition to snow fighting, what are the other pieces of the streets division that, uh, that you oversee? Uh, the streets division is comparable. Uh, made up of uh, mul multiple smaller divisions. There's Parks and Cemetery Division, Sewer Division, uh, Equipment Repair Division, mm -hmm. and the Streets Division, which is the core of it, which actually handles all the potholes, tree work. Um, they also handle uh, traffic control, uh, sign repair, mm -hmm. crosswalk painting, uh, and the like. So anything really from the sidewalk, to the other side of the sidewalk on the street is Streets Division responsibility. And one of your big responsibilities as we sit here in you know, January is uh, snow fighting. It is, and, and snow fighting is, is at the essence of what this whole department does because it's actually something that everyone in this community and motorists that travel through our community as commuters see. So uh, our performance is measured not only by the residents but also by motorists traveling from uh, one location to another. Uh, so talk to me about, you know, I talked earlier with uh, Mr. Huntley about sort of the, the equipment we procure and the sand and the salt, and so we've got all that stuff ready. Talk to me about when a storm is approaching. You know, what, what's your thought process? Uh, I know you have to sort of play meteorologist as well. So what, go through the things that you talk about or you think about when a storm is approaching. Well, there, I, I think about, 
uh, firstly, you start off by just the weather in general. So I have a tendency to continue to watch the weather all the time. Mm -hmm. And I monitor it through several different uh, outlets that we get uh, here professionally and also from National Weather Service and local stations. And then uh, once a storm is upon us, within about 48 hours of a storm, there is a lot of preparation that happens. Um, we typically make sure the first piece of snow fighting event we're going to have, obviously, is personnel. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure all the personnel are in place. Uh, the second piece is to make sure that all the equipment is running, which requires coordination between the mechanics uh, and uh, the uh, tr truck drivers and equipment operators. Um, and then the third piece is when the storm actually starts to come upon us that we have a crew here uh, for assaulting operations to put down our pre-wetting agents prior to the uh, snow actually coming down or right so you, at the same So time. you try to pre-treat the roads with a, talk a little bit about the pre-treatment we, we, we process. Use, uh, two years ago we decided to stop using sand as mm -hmm. a general rule of thumb here um, because of the nature of uh, its uh, build up in the environment plus also the effects of having it uh, having to remove it every year because it requires us to sweep the streets which takes four to five months. Mm -hmm. So we use an, uh, we're using all salt presently mm -hmm. with a ice, uh, ice be gone too it's called so it's pre-mixed it uh, comes to us from uh, inter uh, international salt this year mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, been a fairly effective and proven product um, and it's uh, a little the to the ice be gone too is a much better formulation for the environment um, there's less uh, calcium chloride more mag a little more magnesium chloride mm -hmm. and, and brewers byproducts in it as well okay so you uh, so storms coming you sort of got it on the radar that you know a you know ma a major storms approaching multiple inches of snow how many crews um, how many well how many plow routes are there when you look at your map of the city and how you would, how you're going to fight the storm there, there's 48 plow routes so typically what we do when a snow event happens is that we have about six sander operators uh, one equipment operator here and they actually dispatch the sanding uh, vehicles to salt the mains uh, which basically all the main roads get salted to prevent uh, the snow or ice from bonding to the pavement. Mm -hmm. And once the snow has reached the depth of an inch, uh, then we end up, we call all the drivers uh, that we have. We have 48 routes. Mm -hmm. So the sander operators who have worked already are now going to turn into snowplow drivers. And so from that point on, we fight the storm until it's over, mm -hmm. uh, which typically can last anywhere from eight hours to 36 hours. It all depends on the severity of the storm. And some of these 48 drivers are, are DPW employees that do other things yes. normally in their job, but when it snows, they, they become plow drivers. Yes, uh, prior to Proposition 2.5 in 1980, all the snow plowing was done by the streets division personnel only, and there was about 50 streets personnel. Now presently, the 48 drivers that I rely upon are a mix of uh, all other divisions, including water, wastewater, sewer, parks mm -hmm. and cemetery, um, solid waste. They mm -hmm. all come to the streets division and work under the auspices of doing snow removal. And we also use some private contractors as well. We have some, some for some of the smaller routes, yes, is that correct? We, yeah, we have seven, seven routes that are done by private contractors. Okay. So the rest of the routes uh, are done by uh, municipal employees and municipal equipment. Okay. So. Uh, and obviously you have to try to time this correctly and you have to make sure that you know you know when the storm's going to hit and you time your staffing and so when when a storm has hit and then you begin the you know you're you're doing the plowing operations then you have to start thinking about cleanup and removal and how how we you know you so you have to at some point make a decision I'm going to we're going to declare a snow emergency so that we can get cars off the streets uh, so that we have a better chance to, to make sure the streets are wide and clear, and et cetera. T typically, any long duration event that's going to be greater than an inch and a half, I can almost guarantee that we're going to remove snow. We're going to mm -hmm. plow it because it's, uh, it's much easier to actually plow the snow one time and one time only and remove it from the streets than mm -hmm. leave it there and let it get compacted by cars and continually salt it or sand it. Mm -hmm. um, and the storm could go on for several days if there's no warm up. So, typically, at an inch and a half, we will plow the whole city. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the storm is over, um, we end up having a skeleton crew of employees, usually for the first eight-hour shift. People go home and they rest, um, and then they come back and they start the cleanup process, which uh, requires the uh, impl implementation of the snow emergency, which would already be done at the beginning of the storm. Mm -hmm. And then we will go and clean up selected routes, particularly downtown, where there's a majority of parked cars. And if people, unfortunately, have left their cars on the street after midnight, they get removed, unfortunately. And I think it's important for people to understand that the snow emergency just because it stops snowing out, that doesn't mean that the city and the DPW is not still out 
doing work, uh, removing snow, removing streets, it's not instantaneous. So that's often why the snow emergency doesn't get lifted the minute the snow stops because you still need to have access to those streets so that you can start removing snow on, you know, obviously starting with the main roads, but then moving to the side streets and, and getting them cleaned up. Yeah, that's correct. We, we typically tell people to be wary of a snow emergency 24 hours after the storm has ended mm -hmm. um, due to the nature of, it could be the size of the storm, it could be how many parked cars, um, it could be the uh, possible event of having a back-to-back -back snowstorm. So mm -hmm. people really have to pay attention to the snow emergency. Uh, usually the first snow emergency of the year is the one where we end up unfortunately towing the bulk of the cars because people have to get used to winter time again, even mm -hmm. though we live in New England, you know, mm -hmm. it's a reminder. So more vehicles get towed. Typically the first snow event of the, of the year when this is parking ban. And then as we progress through the winter, typically we have few problems. Uh, yeah. It's a, lot, it's a lot of coordination between our department and the police department and dispatch in order to make all this happen, but it does work very effectively. And, and folks should know that at the be even before winter arrives, we have a citywide snow meeting where we bring in DPW, dispatch, police, fire, uh, and we really try to coordinate what's going to be our plan. And, and we've done a lot to improve communication with residents, everything from the blue lights you mentioned to uh, the new website to uh, the Connect CTY notifications. So we're trying to get the word out to people for their convenience, but also for their safety uh, so that they know that we're trying to clear the roads and, and make them safe uh, for public safety vehicle access. Yep. So, um, so uh, we talked about the, the whole snow operations. You've got uh, these different routes, these different uh, folks that are out. Um, talk about some of the challenges, because I know, you know, we often hear, you probably more than I hear, you know, why do they plow my driveway in, or why do they, you know, why, why didn't they get to my street yet, et cetera. Talk about some of those things that I'm sure you've heard, um, but just try to provide some context uh, in terms of those kinds of questions. Um, I think one of the biggest problems that we have is, is uh, residents um, have just can't get over the fact that we've plowed snow from the street that it belongs to the street into their end of their driveway. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of them complain about that. Other residents also complain about the fact that we filled in their sidewalk mm -hmm. um, with snow, which unfortunately when you have a street that has sidewalks on both sides and they're close to the edge of the road, there's not really much for us to do. Mm -hmm. Residents get upset, they throw the snow back in the street unfortunately, and then eventually we'll come back within that 24 hour period that I mentioned after the storm when we do a cleanup so the snow typically goes back. So I try to just, uh, you know, let residents know that, you know, we are unfortunately tasked with making the road safe and there's no place to really put the snow. There's no possible way that we could ever remove snow mm -hmm. in everyone's driveway. Um, it's just a total impossibility. We, we can barely, you know, we have enough people and, and equipment to get the streets plowed. So it's a challenge. Um, I ask people to be patient. Um, I ask them to go out and shovel multiple times so when they wake up in the morning they, after a 20 inch snowstorm, there's not you know 60 inches of snow by the time we get to the curb mm -hmm. in their driveway. Um, and some of the folks listen and some other folks, you know, it's difficult to convince them. They, yeah. they still want us to take care of everything for them, but it's an impossibility. Well, I, you know, if it's any consolation to folks, uh, you also plow my driveway in as well. <laughs> so, uh, so, but again, it's, it's, it's a fact of life in New England and it's also physics because you, you have to, the plows have to have a certain amount of speed to be able to push that snow and, and <clears throat> it's, it's difficult to make it land someplace precisely. So yep. I understand that. Sounds like we have a heater or something that just came on. No, it's the air release for the air compressor. Oh, okay. Those are okay. too much air pressure. It'll go off Okay. Me. I apologize. No problem. One of the other questions, uh, we, I was talking to uh, Mr. Huntley earlier about your fleet of trucks, and we were talking about the age of the various trucks, and uh, we were talking off camera, we, we were mentioning that this vehicle next to us is a 1997. So That's tell folks how, how you know that or how they know well, how old the, these vehicles every, are. Every vehicle in, our, in uh, the public works fleet has a number on it. Um, usually it's a three-digit number this represents the last two numbers represent the year of the vehicle was manufactured and purchased and the first number is the uh, be it and which how it entered our system so this vehicle is the fourth vehicle that the city purchased in 1997 mm -hmm. so all of our vehicles have this including the oldest piece of equipment which is a snowblower from 1971 that we still operate so that is 771 Wow um, and the newest piece of equipment we will have here is going to be 114 which will be our new 10 wheeler which hasn't arrived yet but is being finished, uh, being manufactured at this point. So, um, and we have a lot of equipment here that ranges in age from 1971 until 
2014. And uh, it's, uh, we, we managed to keep it all running. Uh, some of the older machines we're having a hard time getting parts for, mm -hmm. um, but we have a really great crew of uh, mechanics that have the incredible ability to fabricate a lot of things. Yeah, uh, tell me about the mechanics, because I think they're, you know, people see the folks out in the trucks and feet, but they're really the sort of the behind the scenes heroes who keep this fleet humming and, and figure out ways to keep these uh, they, old vehicles running. They are, they are, uh, not to, you know, like a pun, but they're like the nut and, nut and bolts of the operation in a sense. They're at the core of everything, and if we don't have equipment that functions, then we mm -hmm. can't perform snow fighting or any, any other function in our department. Um, and they are, there's a crew of uh, four mechanics presently. Mm -hmm. um, we have five staff members. One position is vacant at this juncture. Um, and they work uh, tirelessly. They usually work six days a week during the winter months to keep uh, everything uh, running and keep it on track. And uh, they are constantly you know, either metal fabricating or uh, doing uh, all kinds of maintenance uh, to these vehicles, repairing snow plows. Uh, building truck bodies. Uh, I think you might have walked through the garage and saw that they're restoring an old 1987 vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, so they are really, they're the go-to people uh, when it comes to equipment and, and other things as well. They, they support the other divisions as well because we, we maintain all of our fleet ourselves here at this mm -hmm. internally. So no conversation about snow in New England would be complete without potholes. And I know there's a few <laughs> potholes around town right now, and I see you've got a few orange cones out there. Um, talk to me about the potholes. Talk to me about what you're, you know, how you were, try to address those. Obviously, we're in the middle of winter. It's freezing. It's nine degrees out right now. Um, just give us a quick, quick overview of that as we finish up. Um, quick overview is that uh, Northampton's infrastructure, obviously, as a lot of residents know, is uh, a little older. Um, and so we are a little bit behind in our street servicing. So we have a... Uh, we have a lot of potholes, unfortunately, like many other communities in Massachusetts. Um, we do have two what they call hot boxes, which are two uh, trailer units that actually heat blacktop up that we have actually manufactured in the fall. And that's how we make our hot mix uh, to fill these potholes. This time of the year, there's no blacktop plants open because the weather is just too cold and it's not uh, affordable for them to be open. So we go around with these two boxes and we have the ability to put up about four tons of blacktop a day. Mm -hmm. um, and typically when we go to address potholes, we uh, address them on the nature of the size of them mm -hmm. um, that usually are called in by typically by residents who mm -hmm. use our new uh, request tracker through the city's uh, uh, web page. Mm -hmm. um, or you can call and call our department here and speak to a clerk and you know speak directly to someone and we will address the potholes as soon as possible. So if you see a pothole, uh, either go to the website or call the DPW directly yes. uh, to let them know about it so yes. we can get out yep. there and get a crew out there to fix it. Yep. But and it's obviously a fact of life in New England. It's uh, the freeze-saw process and asphalt. So. It is. So there, we have a crew that's dedicated to that, and that's all they really do. And okay. So uh, unless it's, uh, if it's snowing or raining, we're not filling potholes. But if it's uh, sunny out and it's cold like it is today, we still fill potholes. Yeah. So. Okay, well, I want to thank you uh, for spending some time with us today and, and thank you for the work that you do uh, to keep the streets uh, plowed and safe during the winter months. And obviously want to thank uh, Director Huntley for joining us as well. And thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of the Mayor's Report. As always, if you have any uh, questions or comments or if you have ideas for a future show, call my office at 587-1249 or email me at mayor at northamptonma.gov. You can find lots of great information about the city's uh, snow fighting, uh, snow alerts, everything to do with snow, parking regulations at NorthamptonMA.gov. Thank you again for joining us on the Mayor's Report, and I look forward to seeing you next time.